Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Yesterday I came across this video online talking about how to use Illustrator to create this kind of pattern. And I think it's very interesting and I would love to create it inside of Rhino. As you can see that the logic here is pretty simple. Each of those unit is just a little square. The length of this specific part is keep shrinking once it's getting towards to this direction. So it's still a very typical point attractor based parametric design. And once I move this point around, you can see that the variations keep coming. And uh, also, if we drag this around, we will create this sort of motion graphic, which is very cool. And of course, once you change the input here, things will be much more complicated. And if we put it around, let's talk about how do we created this. We're going to start a new file. First thing first, I'll go to vector and I will create a grid. And then in order to make it easier to calculate, I will just put five and five here for the input. Then the next thing I will do is I will find the centroid, which is a center point for each of those little squares. So what I will do is I will come to surface, I'll go to area, drag this in, and then I'll find centroids. It's in a five by five matrix, which aligns with what we're seeing here. If you want to know more about those nested lists, please check our previous video inside of description. And the next thing I will do is I will create a point at this corner. So it's actually just zero, zero, zero. We will just click a point, type zero, it's space. We'll give this point. I'll come to parameters. I will click point. I will right click it, set one point. I will just select it. And the next thing I will do is I will create a distance between this point and the points that we just created earlier. So I will type in distance. This is the first sets of points. And then this is the second point. Actually, we don't need this kind of data structure here, this five by five. So we can just go ahead and uh, right click right here, make it flatten. So we get 25 points here and one point here. And then we will get all kind of different distance in between. We can hide this annoying little box right here. I right click it, extract parameter, click it, and then hide. What this distance is doing is simply measuring things between this, 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 so on and so forth. And the next thing I will do is I will explode those cells. And again, we don't need this data structure. So I will just go ahead and uh, flatten everything. And then we'll get zero to 24, which is 25 squares. And each of the squares or each of those sublists has four items. What explode a curve does is explode the squares into a bunch of lines, right? And one square has four sides. So each of those square has four lines. That's why we have 25 sublists and each of the sublists has four items inside. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna call remap. We have explained this quite a few times. Those are the distance that I want to remap and the source will be generated based on this minimum max, bring it in. And then the target will be set default zero to one. We already break those squares into four different parts and each part is a line. Let's go ahead and get the first item in the list. I'll go to the set list item and we will get the first line, which is this one. And then we'll get the second one. I put integer one right here, third one, and the last one. So first curve, second curve, third curve, and fourth curve on each of the squares. And again, because the first index start from zero in Grasshopper, that's why we have zero to three. And let's take a look of what is the details. So our goal is to create a shape looks like this. As we mentioned earlier, line zero, line one, line two, and line three. And because of the nature of Grasshopper, those lines has their own directionality and which is this one, this one, this one, and this one. And if we want to create a shape like this, we have to make sure that the distance between this and this are equal, right? Same as here to here. One of the easiest way is to call based on the parameters. So what we can do is we can repair measure size this line from zero to one. Let's say this is 0 0.2. And right here, if we call 0 0.2 on this side, what we're gonna get is we're gonna get somewhere here. Then that is not what we want. We wanna get a 0 0.2 at this point. 
so we will use one minus 0 0.2 to get that. Hope that is clear and let's start that process. Curve, evaluate curve, I'll bring this in. And uh, if I type in 0 0.2, this is the point that I'm getting. Right now the default value for the site right here is one. So if I repair matrix size it, it is gonna stay the same, right? But just for the consistency, we're gonna do that right here. And we got this point. The next point we wanna get is somewhere right here. I will make a copy of this, connect to the second curve. And right here, as we mentioned earlier, if it's still 0 0.2, the point is gonna be here and we don't want that. So we're gonna use one subtract 0 0.2. So one subtract 0 0.2. So we get 0 0.8 right here. We're gonna put it right there and we got this. And then let's move to the next line. We're gonna just make a copy of this and drag it here. We got it right here. And the last line, we're gonna drag it from here to here, bring it in. And in order to make the pattern, we have to add those two points into the consideration. So we're gonna start from here to here, to here, to here, to here, comes to this point and goes back. So let's start. We're gonna find this first point right here. It's the starting point of the first curve. So we're gonna make a copy of and type zero. Got this point. And point right here is the end point of the second curve. So what we can do is we will make a copy right here. I'll disconnect it and just type one right here. Then we got all the points we want. And then we can use merge to make them into the certain group. Because of our data management was great. So we can see that in this list, we have 25 sublists and each of those sublists has six data points or six items, which is exactly what we want. And then we can come to polyline, connect it, set Boolean to true, we got this. And of course, right here, everything looks exactly the same. Why is that? That's because points we are using right here is not based on the distance between the center of each cells to this specific point that we choose. So in order to solve that problem, we can bring those distance into place. Again, we are simply getting one input right here. So we're gonna replace this number with the parameters that we just created earlier. I'm gonna click it right here, click it right here, click it right here. And let's check the data structure. We have 25 sublists in this list and each of the sublists has one item. So in order to make them equal, we have to graph it and then let's replace it. And that's exactly what we want. It doesn't look right right now. It's because our target value is from zero to one and that is too extreme. So we're gonna use construct domain right here to solve that. We're gonna start it from 0 0.11 bring it in and uh, bring it in. This is what we're gonna get. I'm gonna hide everything and make a surface based on the input. Costume preview, choose a color and bring it in. That's exactly what we want. We can make this more interesting by changing the mapping rule. We can use graph mapper bring this data in, replace it, right click it, choose sign. I will change the background. I can move it right to the corner to make it same as our example. And I can just drag things around. Also at the same point, I can generate more grid. And of course we can move it to the corner. We can change the domain end also, we can make it smaller or greater. That's it. Thank you so much for your attention. And I'm looking forward to see you in our next tutorial.